Riddler authorized the Actium T4 euthanasia program to murder the handicapped, mentally ill, and other undesirables from German society. The doctors and nurses were given the program directly from Margaret Sanger's own philosophy. This is so dark and so twisted. The following quotes are directly from Margaret Sanger's own writings and interviews. The most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Christine Grace and today is another reaction video. I've recently come across the channel Forgotten History and yeah, I'm loving it. I love a good rabbit hole. I love learning more about things and history is definitely a topic that my dad has been trying to get me into for a long, long time. He's a history fanatic. Um, I didn't pick it in school. I picked geography. I know. Shoot me. No. <laughs> But yeah, I'm slowly but surely learning and hey, perhaps you guys might learn something with me. Today, we're going to be looking at a video titled Eugenics and Planned Parenthood. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to learn about the forgotten history surrounding that topic. And in particular, looking at a lady called Margaret Sanger, who I know is a prominent name in the feminist community. I don't know much about her. I'm excited to learn. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Margaret Slee, president of America's Planned Parenthood Federation, maintains that European women should stop having babies for the next 10 years. But Mrs. Slee, in this country, having babies is the only thing left which is both unrationed and untaxed. Do you think we really ought to stop? Well, I suppose a subject like that is really so personal that it's entirely up to the parents to decide. But from my view, I believe that there should be no more babies. The term eugenics is basically a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human. This just looks like your typical... That was a disgusting thing to say. Looking dead in the camera. I believe there should be no more babies. What a monster. ...in population. Historically, by excluding people and groups judged to be inferior and promoting those judged to be superior. There have been various applications of eugenics, perhaps the most famous being the Germans before and during World War II, which was condemned by the Nuremberg war crimes trials. But the Germans did not invent eugenics. They were inspired by the founder of the taxpayer-funded Planned Parenthood. The truth behind the genesis of that organization and its founder are much darker than most Americans realize. Who was the real Margaret Sanger? Why was she heralded by the Third Reich as the greatest socialist in America? Why do modern Democrats who claim to support the African American population justify presenting her as a cultural icon? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, a veteran of the United States Army and Marine Corps, former history professor, book author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten. Margaret Sanger was born on September 14, 1879 in Corning, New York. She is an icon to left-wing groups due to her founding of Planned Parenthood in October 1916 with her sister Ethel Byrne and Fannie Mendel, which was the first birth control clinic in Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. Yes, I'm such a child. I'm laughing at the fact that her sister was called Fanny. <laughs> Nine days later, the police raided the clinic and arrested all the people involved for promoting birth control, which was illegal. Sanger refused to pay the fine and spent 30 days in jail. She then traveled the country preaching her concepts. Sanger then founded the American Birth Control League in 1921. Sanger also endorsed the 1927 decision Buck v. Bell, in which the Supreme Court ruled that states could forcibly sterilize people deemed unfit without their consent and sometimes without their knowledge. This American law would be the major defense at Nuremberg, the defendants who were doctors practicing Sanger's methods, and many would be found not guilty as a result of this defense. In 1939, Sanger began what was called the Negro Project, alongside black leaders like W.E.B. Du Bois, Mary McLeod Bethune, and Reverend Adam Clayton Powell. This was the plan to have black doctors performing on black patients to perpetuate the sterilization of blacks who were deemed inferior, as many black patients were suspicious of white doctors. Following upon Sanger's eugenics platform, disguised as giving women access to birth control, the ABCL became Planned Parenthood Federation of America in 1942, after birth control was no longer considered illegal at least among married couples. During this period, Sanger had critics and supporters. The supporters even today claim that she condemned abortion. 
arguing that it would not be needed if every woman had access to birth control. Look at the numbers now. Women are using abortion as a form of birth control. What they leave out is that Sanger only opposed abortions if that meant not producing the best, healthiest, most intelligent from Caucasian couples. For blacks, Jews, and brown-skinned people, as well as low-IQ white people, and those with birth defects, they were not to be allowed. The idea of playing God oh, really just doesn't sit right with me. The idea of playing God just doesn't sit right with me whatsoever, and this woman already is making me recoil. All of the ideas are just, oh, it's so backwards. This was opted, ironically, in 1966, Planned Parenthood began issuing its Margaret Sanger Awards annually to honor individuals of distinction in recognition of excellence and leadership in furthering re reproductive health and reproductive rights. However, the organization very quietly and without any fanfare stopped this practice as Black Lives Matter rose to prominence. It would have been seen as the height of hypocrisy to have a liberal-backed domestic terror group that attacked white America connected to Sanger, a Democrat darling who wanted to exterminate blacks. In fact, the last recipient of the award listed on the website is Dr. Willie Parker in 2015. Then, it just quietly disappeared. Parker was an abortionist known for his contentious claims that his Christian faith influenced his work. He was accused of sexual assault in 2019, which he denied, but he still resigned from all of his professional positions in 2020. Other recipients of the Margaret Sanger Award include House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and actresses Jane Fonda and Katherine Hepburn. Margaret Sanger was one of the few women to be given an honorific title and inducted into the and exalted by nun Joseph Goebbels. She was friends with the racist Democrat Democratic President Woodrow Wilson, Democratic fundraiser and automobile maker Henry Ford, who was also friends and a rabid anti-Semite and hater of black Americans. Margaret Sanger's rabid racism, anti-Semitism, and violent suggestions on eliminating all non-whites from American society endeared her to the eugenics crowd. She wanted an all-white, healthy, intelligent society built upon the concept of racial eradication years before the thought. In 1934, the Nazi party adopted her radical positions with Goebbels saying, Margaret Sanger is the best national socialist in America. The September 15, 1935 Nuremberg Laws classified races according to an insane chart drafted by Dr. Wilhelm Stuckart and Dr. Friedrich Kritzinger. The official name was the Reich Citizenship Law and the Law for the Protection of German Blood and German Honor. These laws embodied many of the racial theories underpinned from Margaret Sanger. These laws could provide the legal framework for the systematic persecution of Jews in Germany, who at that time were deemed a race and not a religion, and the eugenics behind them were taken from the world of Sanger. In fact, her theories and opinions influenced men like SS Captain Dr. Josef Mengitz and his associates, Dr. Karl Klauberg, Dr. Hertha Oberhäuser, physician Dr. Karl Brandt, just to name a few, authorized the Actium T4 euthanasia program to murder the handicapped, mentally ill, and other undesirables from German society. The doctors and nurses were given the program directly from Margaret Sanger's own philosophy. This is so dark and so twisted. I don't even have any words right now. Isn't it crazy just how much people are lied to? I can guarantee the average person doesn't know this is the genesis, Planned Parenthood. And it all sounds so harmless and, you know, Planned Parenthood, oh, just, oh, this video is making me sick. But nonetheless, this is the real world. This is the state of it. On August 18, 1939, the Reich Ministry of the Interior circulated a decree requiring all physicians, nurses, and midwives to report newborn infants and children under the age of three who showed signs of severe mental or physical disability. The man who started the program was Dr. Carl Brandt, and they were disguised as children's clinics and advertised that they would treat their abnormalities and infirmities. They were death centers where the children were quietly killed and the cause of death misrepresented as by other means, such as pneumonia, tuberculosis, etc. Dr. Brandt himself claimed that Sanger's methods were most effective and if performed correctly, are ingenious. In Sanger's own words, she peddled racism, eugenics, contraception, abortion, while demonstrating a visceral hatred for children, parenthood, marriage, and the Catholic Church. The following quotes are directly from Margaret Sanger's own writings and interviews. The most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. It is not often that I get this angry. I am livid, livid. I really hope she doesn't have children. I need to Google it. I'm gonna Google it. Pause on you guys. She had three children. She had three children, three children. The woman 
who was killing everyone else's children had three children. They let her have children. They let her have children. A marriage license shall in itself give husband and wife only the right to a common household and not the right of parenthood. All of our problems are the result of overbreeding among the working class. Knowledge of birth control is essentially moral. It's general, though prudent, practice must lead to a higher individuality and ultimately to a cleaner race. I don't even have any words. I don't even have any words. A menace to the human race. The masses are still breed carelessly and disastrously, with the result even more than among whites, is from that portion of the population least intelligent and fit. This is the woman behind Planned Parenthood, where we just saw the images of the Black Lives Matter protesters outside. What, why is the world upside down? They don't even know this is, this is what Planned Parenthood is. This is where it's all come from. Been fed the lie that Planned Parenthood is this great liberal thing, and you've got all of these black people outside, and they're just being lied to. And it's shit like this that was founder of this organization completely backwards. This video needs way more views than it's got because this is absolutely disgusting. And everyone needs to know that this is this is what it is. This is where Planned Parenthood has come from. She's the one who's pushing contraception abortion. This is, this is a demon. This is an evil, evil corrupted person. Birth control appeals to the advanced radical because it is calculated to undermine the authority of the Christian churches. I look forward to seeing humanity free someday of the tyranny of Christianity, no less than capitalism. Number seven, every single case of inherited defect, every malformed child, every congenitally tainted human being brought into this world is of infinite importance to that poor individual. But it is scarcely less important to the rest of us and to all of our children who must pay in one way or another for these biological and racial mistakes. It now remains for the United States government to set a sensible example to the world by offering a bonus or a yearly pension to all obviously unfit parents who allow themselves to be sterilized by harmless and scientific means. Margaret Sanger, the woman heralded by the Democrats and left-wing ideologues in the United States for her positions on women's reproductive rights, always failed to include her genocidal positions on ethnic cleansing. She died on September 6, 1966 in Tucson, Arizona. But good, good, good riddance, you evil, nasty, oh, absolutely vile woman. But Margaret Sanger was not alone. The late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Gator Ginsburg said in a New York Times interview, frankly, I had thought that at the time Roe was decided, there was concern about population growth and particularly growth in populations that we don't want to have too many of. In Elle magazine, Ginsburg also stated that poor people should have ready access to abortions because it makes no sense as a national policy to provoke birth only among poor people. In 2015, out of $1.29 billion in total revenue, $553.7 million came from the government reimbursing Planned Parenthood for their services. In 2020, Planned Parenthood performed 383,460 abortions, the highest number of abortions it has yet reported, and an increase of nearly 28,600. Margaret Sanger is laughing and cheering away in her grave. ...from their previous year. And in the United States, the abortion rate for black women is almost five times that for white women. Just what she wanted. In July 2020, Planned Parenthood quietly removed Margaret Sanger's name from its headquarters <laughs> in Manhattan, New York. Obviously, the Times had caught up with Margaret Sanger. But she still got what she wanted, didn't she? And people are still praising it today. Messed up. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please click like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, Colin, for the lesson. As much as I hated that, absolutely hated it, it is always better to live in truth, even if the truth, as much as that riled me up completely, rub me up the wrong way. I'm glad that I know it because it's become increasingly, it's been made increasingly more aware in, in my mind at least that, that there is an agenda behind leftist ideologies and you know the left, especially when you look at the rise of things like women's lib and birth control and abortion. It's all playing God. It's all taking fate, life, whatever you want to call it into our own hands. It's not. I don't believe that a human being should be able to take the life of another human being, no matter what. Certainly don't believe that there is one cleaner race. I certainly don't believe you should encourage poor people to get abortions. I don't, I don't believe in any of the eugenic cleansing, none of it. Perhaps if more people knew the true genesis of all of this and the darkness 
behind all of these ideologies, maybe people would wise up a bit and stop promoting this absolute filth. The more you know, hey? If you like this video, if you learnt something, I might say, because if you enjoyed this, I didn't enjoy it at all. But if you learned something, definitely give this video a like and definitely go so show some support to Forgotten History because I just learned a hell of a lot um, and I hope you did too. Let me know your thoughts below, what you think of all of this. Is there anything that wasn't mentioned here that perhaps I can learn even further? Why not share this video with someone because I think this particular video is so, so important and especially women need to see this. Women need to see this. Men and women, but women are the ones taking the contraception and getting the abortions. Women, women need to know this is, this is where it's all come from. I'm gonna go sit in a dark room now. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to my channel to check out more reaction videos. I've reacted to another Forgotten History video over there. And go check out my series Debunking the Lunacy where we delve into some of the mainstream mess that's going on in the world and try and discern some logic from it, even though it's proving increasingly hard. But yeah, I shall see you over there. Have a good week.